And then uh, you could also uh, do uh, mouse knockouts. You can knock out the genes for these uh, uh, endostatin. And if you knock them out, the cancers came faster. So certainly in mice, uh, if you don't have them, uh, you get more cancer earlier. So the uh, thought was, well, if you purified them, could you, uh, you know, inject them in a person, would they stop cancer? So uh, early on, uh, Judah was always very short of money and sold the basic intellectual rights to everything discovered in his lab to a company called Entremet. <laughs> and uh, uh, he got a million dollars a year and Entremet got all the rights. And Entremet was run by someone called John Halliday who was a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it, the tests were done really unsatisfactory. And the other thing about the, uh, the proteins was uh, making them. The cheap way of making them was making them in E. coli, but you make them denatured, you've got to refold them. And, you know, are they refolded correctly? Okay. But, uh, you know, uh, they work well enough in mice, and uh, they tried them in humans, and uh, uh, essentially they didn't work. But then you could blame that the company didn't test them, and then worse, they only gave them to people with the last stage terminal cancer, <laughs> you know, as a last resort. <laughs> And uh, there were a couple of people with neuroendocrine tumors that might have worked on. Little. Judah kept believing that they would. Uh, and uh, uh, the work was followed up by uh, a Chinese scientist who was an expert in refolding proteins. So he made them in China and produced and uh, modified the end, tried to make it called an Endostar, and it's for sale in China now. Uh, and it works a little. Okay, so this is, uh, if you look at uh, what angiogenic inhibitors are now, now used, Avastin, which is the antibody against the receptor which uh, sold by Genentech. Uh, it's uh, unbelievably successfully commercially. Uh, but in a strange way, it only works when combined with chemotherapy. It doesn't work at all without it. And then on the average, it gives you about five months of life. And uh, then there have been two tyrosine kinase inhibitors, one made by Sujin and now Pfizer, which bought Sujin uh, sells it as Sujin. Uh, they don't need chemotherapy, but they again only work for a couple of months. So they're not very effective. And then Endostar, the, the Folkman thing, uh, has only been shown to work somewhat, uh, again, when combined with sort of conventional chemotherapy. And uh, Lewell says it works for s uh, five and a half months. But no data has been published in English. And when you talk to the person, and I've gone there a couple times, who was you know, in charge of it, I don't believe anything, except there is some anecdotal evidence. You know, some people seem to, works on a few people. But uh, the Chinese drug is much cheaper than it would have been in the States, but for the Chinese, it's pretty expensive. Uh, and so he's making it more modified. He sort of said it doesn't work because it's not stable enough. I'll come sort of to the conclusion that it'll never work even if it was stable. <laughs> okay. And you see there's the Bastin. And uh, it's been shown to work uh, with some colon cancer. Uh, as you probably all read, they claimed it worked with breast cancer, but didn't. I mean, a bigger trial didn't. Then if you looked at it, uh, uh, it seems if you're lucky, it prevents uh, progression free to survival, but no effect on survival. <laughs> it's just, uh, you know, so, uh, a little creepy. <laughs> okay. Uh, 
And then these are just, you know, the standard. But very good. They, uh, um, good thing. This is a Chinese thing. You can show that, you know, it, it has some effect. But uh, the only effect you really want is c curing cancer. But uh, they're sort of limited. They give it to people with late stage lung cancer. You know, <laughs> from what I'll tell you, this is just the worst possible way to give it to them, to try. Okay, now why? Uh, why do I say it won't work? And the, the reason is that what you'll do if it works is you'll shut off the oxygen and the tumor will go hypoxic. It won't have any oxygen. <laughs> and hypoxia induces a transcription factor called HIF alpha, <laughs> which then, among other things, uh, uh, turns on glycolysis and makes the tumor much, much more dangerous. <laughs> so HIF is a bad thing to turn on. So you would argue you should never turn on HIF. And I'll come back in a moment and say that there are compounds that people didn't realize. Uh, some of our best anti-cancer agents are HIF inhibitors. So why in the world would you want to <laughs> create hypoxia? But Judo, of course, didn't know it, and I'm in no way blaming him. And, you know, if you didn't, without Judo, we'd be way behind. But he pushed her. But anyways, the real, uh, there seemed to be, I think, uh, two real key things which, uh, determine whether your cancer is going to be bad. One, HIF, and the other is uh, AMP kinase, and I'll come back to that. <laughs> that is, uh, if you can uh, turn on AMP kinase, you can stop your cancer, okay? And if you can turn on HIF. And so these probably should be primary targets uh, for trying to control cancer. Okay. So they're after you know, the initial pathways to cancer. So, okay. Now, what uh, happens when you go to hypoxia is you get a you encourage the formation of the epithelial cells to go mesenchymal. And when they go mesenchymal, they lose the connections between each other. The E coherent disappears. And they're motile and uh, potentially invasive. So uh, you don't want an EMT. And in lung cancer, uh, Resistance develops when you have EMT. <laughs> Those are the cells that uh, ERISA, uh, Tarsiba won't block, and I'll come back to that. And uh, so you sort of think, <laughs> no, I don't want a Vastin, <laughs> especially when, you know, uh, it won't work for most things and it will cost you $55,000. And now then there's a, the general orthodoxy is that you have a epithelial to mesenchymal transition and uh, then the cell uh, can metastasize. And then after it's gotten in the liver or lung uh, or brain, it reverts back and you have an MET. You go mesenchymal to epithelial. Okay. That's sort of the, uh, most people say that. And, and there's certainly cases when, you know, you get metastases of breast tumors. Where, uh, and you look at the metastases, there are patches of epithelial uh, cells. Okay. Not mesenchymal. They've gone back to being epithelial. Uh, but I'll come back to say I think the cells that kill you are mesenchymal. Uh, 